Hello! In this video, we are going to explore the reasons and main sustainability and managerial challenges for building adaptation. It is important to understand why we have to focus on adapting existing buildings and what type of challenges need to be dealt with. Let's look at the bigger picture here. In order to understand the need for sustainable building adaptation and the global challenges involved. The built environment is responsible for around 45% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. And within buildings there are also environmental impacts from water and resource consumption. Also, annually we add just 1-2% to of new buildings to the total building stock in the world. This is because buildings have a long lifespan. Much of the built environment that will exist in 2050 has been built already. So, it makes more sense to focus on adapting our existing buildings as quickly and sustainably as we can. Did you know that in most developed countries more money is spent on building adaptation than on new construction? So, we are moving in the right direction, don't you think? But what are the reasons for building adaptation? Why can't we just design and build good buildings that will function properly for centuries? This is because over time the usefulness of buildings for its original function diminishes. This process is called obsolescence. Obsolescent buildings always lack utility. There are four forms of obsolescence. Physical, functional, locational and economic. A building might physically wear out, its original function might become redundant, its location can become unsuitable or its economic rationale is removed. So, obsolescence can affect any building, but it is also a great opportunity for adaptation. With maintaining, repairing, retrofitting and reusing existing buildings, we can really contribute to a more sustainable built environment. But, what then are the main sustainability challenges that building adaptation can help deal with? You might already know that sustainability considers both environmental, economic and social aspects, what we call the triple bottom line. Let's have a quick look at how these aspects relate to adapting buildings. Building adaptation is inherently environmentally sustainable. By adapting buildings, we directly deal with some global sustainability challenges like combating climate change and becoming more energy and resource efficient. By adapting buildings, less CO2 emissions occur, less energy and water is used and less materials are extracted from our Earth. For example, adapting buildings with environmental friendly features makes them more future proof. For instance, so installing solar panels and water recycling systems reduce the building energy and water usage. Building adaptation can also be very economically sustainable. When we adapt existing buildings, we save a lot of capital, as it is often cheaper to adapt a building than to demolish and build new. A study from the UK shows that adaptation costs are around 66% of new build. This is because we don't need to acquire land for new buildings and we have less overall material and labour costs in adapted buildings. In addition, there are a lot of financial economic benefits. When we adapt buildings in a sustainable way, we contribute to a circular economy. In a circular economy, we recycle and reuse as much resources as possible because any resource is valuable. For instance, we can adapt houses in such a way that they use residual heat from industrial manufacturing plants, so we do don't waste any energy. Finally, social aspects related to building adaptation should not be underestimated. Preserving existing heritage buildings helps creating a sense of place and belonging for people. Cherishing local characteristics, characteristics in cities deals with the trend of globalization in architecture. This trend has resulted in buildings that look similar everywhere. Also, building user needs change over time. Nowadays, we see that buildings are a place for interaction, where people meet and work together for personal satisfaction. We also see that people want to customize their workspace as much as possible. They want to use technological gadgets and want buildings to contribute to improving their own well-being and health. These social challenges and are also opportunities for building adaptation. 
We now know that building adaptation contributes to a more sustainable environment. Then why is it so difficult to realize? This is because of managerial challenges that can further be categorized as legal, organizational or financial challenges. Let's have a look what these challenges consist of. Legal challenges can be related to property ownership. Building adaptation can sometimes be complex because of the ownership situation. The more owners that obstruct to the adaptation, the more difficult it gets. Sometimes, in the case of office conversions, it might even be completely unclear who the owner is. This can be a foreign investment company that invests in real estate on behalf of pension funds and that makes it difficult to initiate a building adaptation. In addition, planning law and specific public regulations need to be taken into account as well. For instance, making changes to existing land use or zoning plans can be very difficult. The same is true for securing construction permits for converting a building, because government bodies need to make legitimate decisions through procedures that take time. Organizational challenges have to do with the great variety of actors involved in building adaptation. Influential decision-making actors like developers, investors, architects, owners, users, they all may have conflicting interests and objectives with building adaptation. In addition, there are often community views and cultural values that need to be taken into account. Sometimes the vicious circle of blame is used to il illustrate that these actors use different excuses to not adapt buildings in a sustainable way. Also, managing the construction process itself with all the related tasks and activities performed by several persons is an organizational challenge that can be underestimated. Then last but not least, there are many financial challenges to be overcome. Finance must be secured before commencing any building adaptation. Often money comes from owners or investors who commission it. But sometimes government grants or tax breaks can help as well. Then there's developers and they also need to make a decent profit with the adaptation. And they are always searching for minimizing risks like unforeseen costs such as con contamination. Investors also want a piece of the pie and they will only invest in a building adaptation once it generates a return on investment in the long run. The fact that a sustainable building adaptation is not always financially preferable has to do with what we call split incentives. Split incentives, for instance, occur when those responsible for paying energy bills, which are often the tenants, are not the same entities as those making investment decisions that are often the building owners. Therefore, owners often lack the incentive to invest in an energy efficient building. Now, you have seen that building adaptation can be quite a complex challenge. We have talked about the needs and reasons for building adaptation. We explored some sustainability challenge that we can cope with by adapting buildings. And finally, we discovered that we need to overcome several managerial challenges in order to adapt buildings. Thank you for watching.